All right, people, so here is part one of the July TCG ban list. Cause I, 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 like I said, I feel like it, it should be in July. It's been the three month gap, but it'll be after uh, Nationals and it'll be the list for World. So, you know, I, I mean, they didn't post it. They still haven't posted it. It just says April 1st and then nothing. So, you know, for all we know, we can never be getting a new ban list again, but uh, we're just going to go ahead and assume that it's going to be in July and uh, in good old fashion i do my balance prediction one month ahead except this time it's going to be a little bit different this balance prediction i'm actually going to split it up into two parts because uh the reason why i'm going to split it into two parts is because there's a lot of set precedents clearly on this previous list where literally things that were just taken off of, from the ocg list like things that the ocg list just hit we also got in tandem so especially with worlds coming up i can see a lot of a lot of just copy and pasting from OCG, just like what we did on the April list. Not that I'm saying it's bad or anything, but I could see a lot of copy and pasting. So I think that we are going to go. All right. So, uh, like I said, I think that they're going to do a lot of lists, a lot of things on this upcoming list, just copy and pasting. So, like I said, I like to get my balance prediction up on the first, so people when they start searching for the balance prediction, mine will already be there. But then I may have to do some changes depending on what OCG does in the list because, of course, they get that list before our list. So then I could just be like, oh, slap it on uh, 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 part two and uh, hopefully that list will be uh, is ho hopefully a little bit similar. But uh, depending on some things might change because I kind of feel like uh, we might be hitting a little necker a little bit harder. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So like I said, uh, this is uh, the fun discussion. And I don't know why I called it final discussion because I can clearly talk about it whenever. But it's literally just the first thing that I came up with when I started this thing. And I was just like, oh, I'm not going to change the name. So here we go. So, of course, you guys uh, commented in the comment section below all of these uh, wonderful comments about the band list. You guys' prediction, what you want me to talk about. And I will be doing it. I'm not sure how many parts this will be. Usually it's just in multiple parts. And uh, I will come back. And if you guys haven't posted your comments already... Uh, you can either post it in this video's uh, comment section, or you can go over to that video and post it in that comment section. But if you haven't uh, got your comments already, uh, be sure to, because I am looking forward to hearing what you got, what you people have to say, and uh, replying to you guys. So, like I said, everybody who uh, comments will get their link in the description. I mean, I'm not sure if they have any channels or they do anything, but, I mean, if you want a shout out, I mean, I guess, here you go. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get it started. So starting it off, we have Surreal. And this man says, Dijin, 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 Dijin. Oh my god, yes. Um, if there's any card that should be banned, it should be Dijin. Like, I can't see any other card in the TCG that is worthy of being uh, banned at all besides Dijin. Um, Necros are already strong enough. They are the strongest deck, and you know it's not necessary for them to have their own you know, searchable, uh, you can't play fucking Vanity's Emptiness, you know, with Vanity's Emptiness at one, but, you know, everybody can play it, and it's just not fair that you just, all you have to do is go, Laurel Chain, send it, oh, I'm gonna use it, okay, no, you can't spell this anymore, like, I get that they want, they made the card make, you know, rituals a little bit better with all the gym monsters, and you know, all the gym monsters have pretty decent effects, but, uh, just Releaser, Releaser is just the one that's, like, this card's not even necessary, it's not even necessary to be, uh, even playable right now. Like, the, it's not limited worthy. It's not, you know, anything. It's either at three or it's at, you know, it's banned. You know, there is no in between because you really only need one. But uh, it's just not a card that's necessary, you know. Uh, Necros would still be the best deck whether they had the gym or not. So uh, instead of, you know, like, oh, well, we'll hit the shit out of Necros and then we'll leave Releaser and just forget about it. Like, no, like, there's clearly the Ritual deck is the strongest card. This is a problem card. Let's go ahead and address it now. It's just like uh, with uh, Super Rejuve, where because of the Dragon Roller, Super Rejuve got addressed, you know? And I definitely think that Releaser should be banned because of Necros, but not only because of Necros, for any Ritual deck. Like, I don't even care if you're running, you know, the simplest, crappiest Ritual deck. You shouldn't be able to simply lock someone out of special summoning like that. I don't even think Vanny's is a healthy card, but, you know, at least they had that down to one. But Releaser, I mean, come on, man, you know, and only I can't special summon. You can special summon all you want, you know, at least with Vanities, at least we both can't special summon. No, only I can't special summon. If I can't get rid of that monster, then I'm pretty much fucked then, huh? Like, no, no. Yeah, Releaser should be gone. All right, next we have Tyler Green, and Tyler Green states, the Star Staff engine, yes, definitely the Star Staff engine. Uh, they made their money off of it, like, you know, they sold it, they made their money off of it, and, uh, 
it didn't shake the like it did in the OCG, but definitely enough to be worn to get hit. Um, you know, uh, Telenite's kind of dropped it. It's been more of a Shadal thing, but uh, you know, the plus thing is just too hard. You know, you go like plus three or four off that one combo, and it's just it's just really ridiculous. You know, uh, you made your money and go ahead and hit it. Uh, what do I think will be hit? Set precedents are gonna go ahead and hit um, a Sovereign Key to one like they did in the OCG. Just set precedence. It's easier to copy OCG than to uh, try to do their own hits generally. So uh, there you go. Then next, Tyler said, "My favorite deck, Necros. Uh, I apologize it's your favorite deck, but you know clearly Necros are gonna get hit. Like if any deck's gonna get hit, it's Necros. You know now whether they'll be strong enough for Worlds. On the other hand, that's questionable. Uh, really, I'm not sure what's topping in OCG besides like you know maybe like Neptibus and like Infinity." But I'm not sure if Necros are still doing anything in the OCG. I mean, they got hit pretty hard in comparison to here. But uh, definitely Necros should get hit here. Uh, for right now, I'm going to go ahead and my Necros hits, I'm going to go ahead and predict the current hits on the OCG as a copy paste. But if OCG takes it farther, then uh, then I'll come back for part two and address that accordingly. All right, next card you have, lose one turn. I doubt it. I said, I usually don't say, like, oh, the card's too new to be a hit, but uh, clearly Konami created the card. This is their idea of a more balanced skill drain, and while it may suck ass, because it, it's, it's kind of like a skill drain, uh, you know, it's one of the money cards in the set, arguably the best card in the set, Cross Souls, and, uh, I mean, maybe down the line maybe but like i said it's a balanced version of skill drain to an extent and it just kind of sucks that you once again just like a skill drain you put it in particular people's hands and it sucks because if you just look at it from a you know standpoint where it'd be like a mirror match or something where you know like two telenite players and you know everybody's fucked over evenly but when you put it in the hands of like you know like you send you and cleese then it gets kind of ridiculous so i don't think uh lose the turn's gonna get hit i think it's gonna stay at three uh, maybe for a while. I could possibly see an insane at three for a long time. I see Cleese getting hit and dying before Lose a Turn gets hit. So here you go. All right, next card you have Mistake. Uh, a couple of people said Mistake. You said Mistake and Mind Crush. Uh, me personally, I think Mistake is a balanced card. You know, it sucks that you can't search, but at least both players can't search. You know, uh, Mind Crush on the other hand, Mind Crush is Mind Crush is a bitch. Like. It's a double-edged sword that's not even a double-edged sword. It's kind of like a really hypocritical card. Uh, you know, everybody searches in this game. So when it comes to mistake, hey, I still have a mistake. You can't search, but I can't either, you know? And unless I change it to one of your searching cards, I'm going to neg on activation, you know? So I feel like mistake in comparison to Minecraft is a much balanced card. Minecraft, on the other hand, not only does it have set precedence of being hit in the past, even at one, which I predict is gonna get hit too, again, but look at that card. Like, oh, you search, Minecraft. As, as long as the card is at three, I get to go, like you lose that card, whether it be spell, trap, monster, whatever. And I get to see your hand like that. That's, that's, that's just ridiculous. Like, Minecraft, is a very powerful card. It will always be a powerful card. Uh, it was powerful back in the slower form of the game, and it's powerful now. It's just like Snatch Steel. Uh, Minecraft will never be outpowered creeps because, you know, what makes a deck good? Consistency. What's consistency? Generally, it's searching. It's either searching or drawing. So when it comes to searching, searching will always be good in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! And Minecraft, therefore, will always be good. So I definitely think that Minecraft should be the one to get hit. Um, like I said, Mistake, uh, I feel like it's a balanced card. It's a uh, fine card. And I know it sucks that, you know, it's like, oh, well, you know, most people are like, oh, you know, hit Mistake because I want to promote Necros. like, no, 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 no. No, no Mistake uh, is one of them balancing factor cards where it's even on both planes, you know. Uh, it's not really generally a card you can take advantage of, you know, like, oh, well, you know, my deck doesn't really search, so I, um, I should take, I mean, there's kind of decks like that, like Shadals and Yusenji, but even they search, you know, so, uh, Mistake is just a fine card, in my opinion, it's fine. It sucks, but it's fine, it's the best as you're gonna get, I'd much rather have th three mind, I mean, three Mistakes over three mind crush any day. So, there you go, uh, Mr. Tyler, so, moving on. We have uh, Wesley. So Wesley says, uh, Dragon Ravine back to three. I don't have, right now, currently, I don't have any precedence on this card at all. Uh, like I said, in the OCG, they, at the same time, they banned Dragon Roars and they, uh, I think they already had Dragon Ravine at one. Like, they didn't ban Dragon Ravine like we did over here in the TCG. 
but uh, they also didn't move it. So for right now, before I see OCG's next list, you know, this is like I said, this is before uh, OCG's July list that I predict that they're going to go ahead and do. I cannot say that Dragon Green will go back up to three. Could it go back up three? Yeah, sure. But will it? No, I can't. I can't. I can't guarantee that to predict that. For all I know, Konami feels like you know what this card sending dragons, even with the dragon rulers. Let's just keep it at one. You know, I'm not sure. I didn't you know. But I have no precedence. I have nothing to tell me that, you know, Dragon Ravine will go back up to three. You know, if it was three in OCG in one year, then oh yeah, sure. But it's not. It's one both places. Like I said, even with the Dragon, even with OCG, even when they banned the Dragon Rulers, they still kept Dragon Ravine at one. So I'm not sure. Like I said, I will wait until OCG's next list. And if they put Dragon Ravine in three, then I will go ahead and say, yes, Dragon Ravine in three. But for right now, no. I see it staying at one. All right, next you said mistake, possibly getting hit. I already talked about that. Uh, we said, will they hit the tellers, and if, and if so, in what way? Uh, lots of people are saying, gun uh, the counter trap, Nova, but Nova's a balanced card. Like, it's uh, powerful because, you know, it's an archetype that gets a, a solemn judgment s card, but, you know, there's a handful of archetypes that have it. The only card that we really have set precedence on where a counter trap card in a deck archetype got hit is, of course, Infernities, but the problem with Infernities is that it was searchable. Stellar Knights cannot search that card, and they purposely did that. You know, if they said, you know, Deneb, search for a Stellar Knight card, and you can just go, Deneb, search for Nova, then, hey, yeah, definitely, you know. Sure, it might even be Deneb that will be the one to get the punch in the face, you know. You maybe get even the Infernity Treatment and get Deneb and the, the Counter Trap hit if you were searchable, but it's not. You know, you draw it, and you, you got to tribute to Stellar Knight, you know. It's not like... Solemn Judgment or something where I keep my field, I keep impressed. I got a tribute to Teller Knight monster. So I, I not only lose my Teller Knight monster, and they kind of even out, like, well, you get to draw a card. Well, at least one, if you want, it's a counter trap, so you should at least even out. You know, like generally you do. You play something, I hit you with the counter trap, it's a one for one, We it's zero, right? So if I'm going to go ahead and activate my Nova and tribute my monster, so two cards to stop your one card, you know, because I'm just like, oh, let's go ahead and give him a draw. So, when it comes to Nova, I don't, I don't feel like Nova should be the one hit. At first, I was thinking about it, I was like, yeah, yeah, Nova the one. But now I really th sat down and thought about it, and it's like, well, what precedence do I have, you know? It's not Nova the one that's fucking wrecking shit in Teller Knights, in my opinion. And I played Teller Knights. It's not Nova, you know? I've won plenty of duels and never got a single Nova. So, I'd say it's not Nova, you know? Ser Nova searchable? Yes. But since it's not, and you have to draw into it just like any other card in Teller Knights, no. Uh, what I want to point the finger out when it comes to Teller Knights, I think it's Trevor. Trevor is ridiculous. Like, we have Giant Trune banned. Banned. Because, essentially, when you think about it, when it comes to Giant Trune, you're kind of resetting the duel. I mean, think about it. For example, when it comes to Giant Trune, let's say you go first. You have a Torrental, a Solemn Warning, and a Bottomless. You set all three. Pass to me. I draw. I have a Giant Trune. Giant Trune, put all your cards back in your hand, and then I reset my... And then I reset the same exact card. And when I pass it to you, my card's activated, you're not. So essentially, you're kind of resetting the back row, you know, in a sense. And that's one of the powerful things about Giant Trunade. And essentially, Teller Knights are using this Giant Trunade S card of Trevor in the same exact way, running multiple Phoenix Chains, running Call of the Hunters and Oasis, which, of course, when the monster's not on the field, uh, they get stuck because, you know, the monsters weren't destroyed. Then you simply summon a trip, go ahead, put them back in your hand, use them again, like, uh, I think it's Triv, you know, just the powerful, powerful effect of Triv to go ahead and return, like, everything, and pick something out of your opponent's hand, just a very powerful effect. Uh, now, when it comes to extra deck cards, it's generally very hard to hit, because they're part of the toolbox, you know? It's not like, well, let's go ahead and hit this extra deck card, because it'll lower the consistency, you know? It's just like, oh, well, um, you know, Exiton is wrecking everybody, so let's go ahead and limit Exiton down to one, to lower the consistency of you getting Exiton. Like, what does it fucking make any sense? It's in my extra deck. I, I will always have access to it. So that's why, uh, when it comes to hitting extra deck cards, there's a problem. Uh... Personally, I'm thinking, I think one Triv is enough, you know, uh, you know, if you want to recycle it back, more power to you, but go into Triv, and then, all right, well, you killed it, all right, Triv, 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 and like I said, I play Teller Knights, I play, and uh, I made, I had triple Trivs, and I triple triv and it was ridiculous, you know, just go ahead and just put everything back, give me something out of your hand, you know, so um, I, I feel like the first hit will definitely be Triv to one, and then the second hit, off of set precedence, lowering the consistency, uh, I feel like Deneb will probably go down to two. You know, as the first hit, kind of like what they did with Cleese when it came to Scout. 
Like they hit scout to two. So now scout is on the list. It has set precedence, lower than that's consistency. I don't like think they're going to hit Rota because they still want to promote, you know, future uh, warrior t uh, archetypes such as, you know, like uh, Ignites. But Deneb is the searcher card, you know. By lowering Deneb, uh, it lowers the opening consistency, you know, it definitely does. Uh, at first, I think I think that two is fine, and if Teller Knights continue to be, uh, you know, one of the best decks, and they want to hit it again, then Deneb simply go to one. You know, it's as simple as that. So I think that you know Deneb down to two would be a, a first fine hit, along with Trib to one. You know, with one Trib and two Denebs, the deck's not dead. Like I said, this is the first hit, but it's hurt, and uh, it deserves to be hit because it's never been hit before. You know, so. Uh, I definitely think that, you know, with Triv at 1 and Deneb at 2, and then when we combine the list of worlds and Rudda will be at 1, uh, maybe the deck won't be as strong uh, to uh, maybe possibly do something at worlds. But like I said, at, right now at this point, uh, depending on how good Necros are in the OCG, I could possibly see Teller Knights uh, winning it, you know, because, you know, Shadows are kind of dead over there in the OCG, and, you know, their Necros are kind of hit. Cleaves are kind of hit, so I said the only deck that really didn't get hit too much, you know, especially if Turtle Knights go unscathed for our list, this upcoming list, you know, the only thing they really got hit is, you know, OCG has one Rota, so I could I could totally see Teller Knights uh, taking Worlds, so uh, I'm not sure if they want to just say, forget it, Teller Knights not get hit, then they win Worlds and then they get hit, or go ahead and just hit them now, but I think they've earned it, I think they've earned their hit, it's been long enough, and I think that they definitely uh, earned their hit. So uh, there you go. That's what I think about Teller Knights. So, and uh, last thing I was he said, an odd one, but I think Grand Mole can make a comeback. What are your thoughts? Grand Mole is never a bad card. It's always a good card. It just depends on the format. Uh, think about it, Compulse and Grand Mole in the same exact boat. And of course, they're kind of like the same exact boat because they both bounce things. But uh, think about it. Depending on what format it is, Grand Mole can be the tits or it can be not that good. You know, just like with Compulse. Right now, Compulse, not that good. But if we went into straight up a format where, you know, Shadals were the tits and, uh, you know, maybe like Teller Knights. Like, it was, if it was like pure Shadal, Teller Knights, if those were like the best shit and it was generally, you know, extra deck based shit, then Compulse would be great again. You know, if you want to go ahead and summon your Shadal monster, Compulse, bam, I got you, huh? It's good. Compulse is great again. Grand Mole is the same thing. Yes, it does cost you your normal summon, but that continuous bounce and being able to, it's hard, it's really difficult to grab your hand around the Grand Mole. Grand Mole will always be good. Grand Mole, it just depends on the format. And the reason why they hit Grand Mole and they don't want to up the consistency of Grand Mole, and that's essentially, they don't want to up Grand Mole because they would up the consistency of Grand Mole. If you have that Grand Mole and that's that one Grand Mole, essentially that's all you need as long as you, if Grand Mole is doing its job. And also you got to keep in mind that depending on what state in the duel is, you could be completely up on your opponent because of Grand Mole. If you have a monster and you before additional monster on the field before you summon your grand mole equal to your opponent, you could easily take control of the duel just because of the, the pressure that grand mole applies. You know, for example, I used this when I played my eels. I would summon that Ophion against Shadals. They can't fuse. What, what, what are they going to do? They're going to go ahead and set them uh, squatters. Go ahead and set them dragons to get rid of my Ophion, right? No, 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 no. No. How about I'm going to go ahead and summon grand mole, grand mole attack, bounce, you're not flip. So, they're going to lose. They're going to lose. Like, if I have Ophion and Grandma, they're fucked. The Shadal players are fucked. Because every single time you shed a Shadal monster, I'm going to bounce it before you flip. Pokey with Ophion. You can't still can't summon Pokey with Ophion. You know? So, Grandma, like I said, it goes up and down in popularity. But, <laughs> Grandma, in my opinion, should just stay at one. Like, it, it will always be a powerful card. And I don't think that up in the consistency is uh, good. You know? Because right, may, maybe right now it's not good. But it could be good in the future. It's just like what Compulse. Yeah, Compulse isn't good right now. So do I think that we should up it to multiple copies? Like, no. Because we don't know. You don't know what Konami what Konami's going to do next. So instead of being like, oh, yeah, let's go ahead and move Grandma and Compulse because, you know, they're not good back up. And then they get good and you're like, oh, shit, hit him again, you know? There's no point. So uh, there we go. Uh, maybe I can squeeze, like, one more in here. So we have, it's like... I want to say Xant XX10 because XX and XX10. So, like, X makes like a Xant sound. I don't know. I don't know. So, uh, we'll do this last one and then we'll call it for part one because I don't want this video to be like, you know, forever. We barely got through three comments and this video is every 20 minutes because Daniel doesn't know how to shut the fuck up. So, there we go. Alright. He said, A Konami hit, if I've ever seen one, would be to put all the Necro's Mirrors and cycle 
to one or ban. Uh, uh, I have no precedence on hitting the other Necron's Marriage besides Cycle. Cycle? We have precedence on that from the LCG, so I can simply just see them just copy and just be like, all right, well, Cycle's also limited here. You know, like I said, for me to really get into Necrops, I have to see uh, not only what they're doing in the OCG, but then also OCG's July list, so we can go ahead and have set precedence off of that list as well. You know, I didn't think it was going to be as immediate, but we have precedence from the uh, Ember list that just because, you know, they get their list a couple days before, and, you know, it clearly looks like, hey, they're all Konami, so TCG looked at their list and was like, you know what, you made some good choices. We're going to go ahead and do that too, so who's to say that they're not going to do it for this upcoming list in July, especially when we're going to combine four worlds, right? Instead of being like, well, here are all the TCG hits, and here are all the OCG hits, and then we combine them. How about they make some of the hits actually the same, so there's no confusion when it comes to that. Or as much confusion, because there's just some things that TCG and OCG will never agree on. But, you know, when it comes to, you know, especially off of presidents of the April list, it seems like there's some hit that we agree on. You know, some that we don't. So, like I said, the only thing that we have presidents on is Cycle. I think they run two of each mirror, and then one... No. Yeah, they run two of each mirror, right? Uh... Including two cycle because you know it's not limited to one like it is in the OCG, but uh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Then short print Zephra Saber, I don't know what that. It would force people to buy an overpriced bad card if you want to play Necros ever again. I'm I don't know what Zephra Saber does. I'm assuming it's another card for uh, Necros to be able to Richard Summon. I have no idea, but uh, like I said, I'm right now. The only thing I can say about hitting Necros is just copy the OCG off of pass list so i can clearly see um brown it going to one of course because that that card's already on the list so either they'll usually just turn that down to one off a of set precedence and it's already on the list and they drag out the new cards that are already on the list uh unicorn to one copying uh ocg uh cycle to one copying the ocg we already have prep at one uh and probably manju to two just like ocg you know for now and if you know it's still too much like i said i have to see a, what Necros are doing in the OCG, and B, uh, how they're going to hit it in the OCG. Because if they don't hit it at all, and then maybe that's enough for Necros not to be good in the OCG, then they will just copy, simply copy it here in the TCG, and then bam, Necros are done. You know? So right now, it's kind of like OCG is like our testing. Especially now, since uh, we got mostly all the cards that are competitive, the same with the OCG besides their OCG exclusive. So... Since we're all the same, we have a lot to copy, you know, like, the only thing that they really have different, I believe, is, like, Neftibus and, of course, Broken Ass Infinity, uh, but, you know, we have Burning Abyss, so there's some, a little bit of differences, but, you know, generally, you know, uh, their channel lights don't, you know, top as much, and, uh, you know, their Shadals are done, so if we ever want to, you know, hit Shadals, simply just copy them, simple as that. So uh, there we go. Here is part one. We we got through fucking four comments, like, uh, and we haven't even got to like people's actually like list that I have to go down. Like these are people. This is just a couple of cards that I talked about. So like I said, I'm a long-winded talker. You guys know that. But we will be back tomorrow using Cleves and of course talking uh, part two. Uh, like I said, if you haven't gotten the opportunity to go ahead and comment your comment then be sure to go ahead and go to that video and comment or you guys can come here and just comment or oh, you're already here and uh, comment in the comment section below right here so uh, like i said uh, right now you're just looking at duels of i guess me playing with teller knights like uh like i said it is uh non-commentary clearly i didn't talk about anything that's going on the screen like i said i record this first and then i record the duels so i don't even know what's going on in the duels but i hope they're fine uh, anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this, and I am looking forward to talking more in uh, part two tomorrow. So thanks for watching, thanks for all the support, and yeah, see you guys tomorrow with part two.